Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome everybody. Uh, so it's been, I know it's been a little while since I've done a bit, but never mind. There you go, Easter and everything, and work getting in the way. I did just do a video. I haven't, I don't know whether I've uploaded it yet or not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know whether I'm putting it up before I put this one up, but it was, <laughs> it was turning this, and I couldn't show it properly because I'd only just, um, Back at it, so there you go. That's how it finished up on the. You got it. On the side. That's how it finished up. It's got a bit dusty in here. Mm. So bottom all finished up, and that was the finish we got on it. Okay. So that was the finished article. Okay, and that was just given a coat of uh, a lacquer, a new lacquer. I'm testing it out for someone. I can't let you know what it is at the moment, but it is. Yeah, it's got to come as a bit of a, a storm. It's not available yet. <laughs> um, so, yeah, more to come on that at a later date. Right, what am I turning? Right, I've got a piece of sycamore. This is uh, from Barry and Peter Raven gave me this wood. But it is wet, so I can't do a lot of sanding on it. I'm making one of these. Yes, I know, it's another tea light holder. At the moment, guys, I cannot make enough of this. I've signed this one as well. Look at that. It's got my, my little signature Ooh. on the bottom. It's laser printed like, like oh, that. God, yeah. Right, at the moment, guys, in all seriousness, though, you just can't make enough of these things, tea lights. Um, it's it's just, well, they are, and I'm just giving a piece of something there, that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, people seem to be really into their tea lights at the moment, um, and tea light holders, like these things, as I say, I can't make enough of them. Guys, they sell as soon as they're made. I don't sell them personally, but I have someone who takes all my stuff and gets rid of it for me. Um, things like this. And tea light holders, yeah. That's why I've done the Banksy and that one. I've done the other ones. Doing that sort of shapes, because weird shapes they like. I mean, you go into um, Poundland, I went in Poundland yeah, last week, went in there, and they had a crate full of tea lights. 70 tea lights for, I think it was four quid or something like that. And I've got so, and when I went in there a couple of days later, they was all gone. People just go mad for them because with everything, I think people now with the energy costs and everything, they sit there and they put tea lights on over the evening, put little candles and stuff like that. Candles are selling like mad. And uh, I mean, we do it, we, we light candles yeah. of a night, we'll have candles indoors. And I'll tell you soon, there's gonna be a bloody baby boon, isn't there? Cause you know, <laughs> the old romantic candles, I'm like forever, so at least just get off me, leave me alone, will you? <laughs> Try and watch telly. Put your clothes on, you're scaring the dogs. <laughs> it's, <laughs> no, it's, as I said, like, well, yeah, but we um, yeah. <laughs> we like, normally have one a light of the night. We put leave one in the toilet, a candle light. We get the eight hour ones and it's in a proper hold and we leave it a light all night. And that yeah. way, if you get up in the night for a week, you ain't got to put lights on, have you? It's there. Hello, Buster. Buster's just come in to join us. Yeah. Right, I'm going to mount this between centres first. I'll show you how I've done. This one, if you're interested, if you're not interested, then don't worry, because we've got to do this bit first, obviously, and then we'll turn either side. You'll see how we do it as I go along. Yeah. Right, it's not instructional, but it's just educational. <laughs> right, okay, I'm using my big step centre, because I've got them and I can do it. If you haven't, you have to make do with what you got. Right, I'm putting that in my little SC2 chuck. I'm using that because I want to keep limit the amount of twist this will help the to central it um well i've got i did have a knot on this one as well and i don't know where i kept that where i kept that on yeah it comes out sort of that knot there is is there so it's okay it's, it's it seems fairly stable that so i'm going to get this between centers and you want it good center because obviously we're doing square aren't we Right, knock everything off, bring that up and get that. There we go, nice, right on the points. Two step centers I'm using, so I've got the big one, which that helps to stop any of that, keeps it nice and straight, that big. And I just give a good tighten up, like so, everything's tightened down. There we go, it's not gonna go nowhere. Now for this, you know, I'd I'm not, we're not roughing down, so I've gotta be the center of this. Now, with bang on I've got to fit right there now I'm not worried about getting dead wait pack it up you two 
I'm not worried about getting uh, dead centre. The dogs are going to start their start fighting now. Look. Well, not fighting, they're playing. They're playing. <laughs> Buster gets a bit like Lisa when there's a candle on. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to use a, a mixture of time. I'm going to use some traditional, some carbide, some bits are easier to do with the spindle gouge, some bits are better to do with the carbide. But everything can be done with just carbide or oh, just no. traditional, whatever you want to do. I like to use a mixture of everything. Yeah. Okay, I like to use all my tools. So right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to start that up and I'm going to step over there first, alright, see what it's going to do. It's staying on. Yes, it does spin rather fast. You want it nice and fast. Turn it down friction. Right, you want it nice and fast because you need really nice clean cuts. Well, I'm going to start off with a spindle gouge with a Half inch spindle gouge has got a very long line on it. Look at this point here to see where the cut is. You need to look here where you put your chisel, but you want to look at this top V, what you're forming in the top. As you come in, just close your flute. Anyway, you don't need me to tell you how to use the tools, you know how to use the tools. You do want nice clean cuts, guys, because this is right. If you come around and deal with the camera, you can show people the new turners. What I'm on about when I'm saying, I come right around here. There. Right, now you can see what I can see. Yeah. Okay? So this here, one out of this, this here is what I'm looking at. Okay? I look at this top bit when I'm cutting down here. Okay? Because when I'm down here, I can't see that shape coming. Okay? So I've got to come, as you can see, it's not a dead center, but it doesn't matter, so I'm going to take off from underneath yet, mm -hmm. alright? Okay, so you can go back over there now. <laughs> so I'm just going to go a little bit deeper with it. Now, obviously if we are doing that with a carbide, that obviously is the detail chisel. Okay, so this would be done with this the detail. Okay, and I made the tool so we can do this. So all we do is we come in the same, come here, pick the cut up, right, rotate it, pick up the cut. I'm not taking too much off, I'm just not taking anything off. There we are. Bottom. Just close it as we get to the bottom. Right, we've gone in. I don't want to take too much away now, so I've got to be careful. We just slide that bevel down. We can do it for both, okay? So I'm going to stop and have a look at it and see what I've got. Right, I'm okay. I haven't gone too far off on that end anyway, so we're about right. See, it doesn't matter whether it's in the centre, because centre will be wherever that is, because I'm going to come in on here and come in on here. So it doesn't have to be, don't worry about that being in the centre. This will come down just that little bit lower there. Right, okay, so. I can go a fraction deeper on that, I think. I want to go a little bit deeper. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right, so. Um, let me grab my spindle gouge because it's going to be. Um, some tools, like I say, we can do it in detail, but 
if you can use your spindle gouge and you've got one, the spindle gouge is going to be a little bit easier to get these through. more off from the end so I'm just coming in on this bit. Just make sure you close that flute if you get into that bottom. If you've got your flute open at all, you will get one last attack. side I've got a little line just on that side but that's it that's what I want I only want to go in that far I don't, I'm not going in any further if you have a, a wider piece of wood then yeah you could cut that in quite far if you want it's up to you what you want to do right, I just want another cut this side because I've got a little line in there and it's not very easy to get a sandpaper in there anyway. See, it happens like that. And that's why I'm not doing it. Now, if you're gonna do it, have a longer strip and come in like this, fold it in half and come in. But in all honesty, if you can get your cuts really good, we can clean that up a little. The tiny little bit that they need will be done by hand, okay? Right, so now I've got to put a tenon on this bottom so I can turn it around and I want my tool rest to be just slightly on the squiff that way I don't like it dead straight okay I've got to come in here and just put a tenon on okay so we can do that with again with either we can do it with the spindle gouge so we just want to come in this chuck that's on here so that is about it so come in like that and that's it now if you're going to do it with a carbide it's exactly the same use the detail chisel come in again and pick up the cut Now I can turn that round and hold that in my tenon there, okay, in my jaws, okay? And then this will be done once I've done the other side. So we're now turning around on this. This is going to go around the other side because everything will be around that side now. chuck is perfect for this sort of size projects there tighten a bit 
It's wet wood this, so be careful. Well, you don't have to be careful because you ain't got it. <laughs> I have to be careful. <laughs> <laughs> right. There you go. Now, I would, like, if this was dry wood, I would have put this on my sander and I would have cleaned these straight edges up. So being it's wet, it would just clog up my sander. So what I will do is wait until I've done them really thin and then I'll do them. Or thin out, I should say. Dogs are having a little play down there. Buggers. Right, again, I like my tool rest to just be slightly off from straight. I don't want it dead straight across, it's just slightly in like that. Okay, so now we're going to just bring this in a little bit. And again, we can do, I, we can use a, I don't need a, a long pointy detail now, um, spindle gouge. So we can use spindle gouge and we can use the carbide. So I'm going to start off and do a bit with the um, spindle gouge and then I'll probably do a bit with the carbide as well. Right, and this is our top bit we're doing now. I find it in it, there it is. <laughs> Now, because I've got the insert, I need to know roughly how big that is. So I've already got it marked up on this one, okay? So all I want to do is come in. Right, just mark it like that. Just so I know how far down I can go to, all right? Mine goes down, she's going to come and start where my opening is. Okay, that's going to be where my opening is going to be. It's just to there, okay? So now I know how far I can come down on here. taken down first and then I'll bring the tips in. I know a lot of people do it the other way but I do it this way. done with the detail chisel. Well, I say the detail, the detail and the 9 mil. We're both good for this. one for that is the 9mm, the 9mm box hollow up, okay, and we're just exactly the same, got the handle down nice and low, come in, keep on that bevel, so come back, rotate, pick the bevel up, there it is, See how deep I'm going because I don't want to go over depth. We're going all right. 
I want to come down near enough to the center of this, leaving enough room for that one to come up. Okay, so I will now start to take a few cuts from the edge to thin this down a bit, okay? So I like to get that down first, because it doesn't matter how much I leave in there, that is not gonna give any support to that, okay? So, that's that. <laughs> ultra thin but I want them thin enough that's looking good there's a very punky on that edge there but we'll clean that in a second all right we're looking good we've got all even there we're all even on that yeah that's looking good actually mm -hmm. it is wet though that is the only thing it's wet between the spindle gouge and the yeah, the, yeah except for the spindle gouge there right that's okay I'm on that there we go that's all right 
Yep, I'm on there. Now, sorry, now I'm gonna pull this out. Found that bad ball. Go to the nine mil. Just turn that center out. And I only want to go down to the depth of the the center of the piece, really. So I'm going to come up on the other side, and I don't want to go through it. And it's only to hold the tea light holder anyway. and I can get a nice little push cut down here. That will clean that up. Move from the bottom. There we go. And then let's check. Feels alright but I can't see if it's got all the dust in there. to do is no yep that's going to fit okay that's going to fit all right quite a tight fair because the suction makes it go up like that <laughs> that's quite a tight fit <laughs> well not a tight fit but it's a perfect fit, perfect fit yeah. but that means the suction is going to push it up so all right what we're going to do first off it so it's not gonna see that suction fit. Right now I've got a little lip in there because these tea light holders have a little lip around them. And we'll see if that's gonna get yeah that's it that's gonna sit just in there just below look at that. Okay and that's perfect. I don't want it to be pushing up when I put it in. Okay so that's that done. Yeah. 
doing. Right, a little bit on the tips. Tiny little bit on the tips. over on it because like I said it is wet wood but it's a good cuts and it's it's not too bad it doesn't need a lot of sanding it's okay that's okay right now we can turn that round and you'll see from that what we've got now right okay so that's what we've got so far that's how see we've got nice nice little shape to it okay mm -hmm. Right, so that's what we've got so far. Now we're going to turn it round. And this is it's quite got quite like a bit punky there on the sides. I think it's more is where it's so wet, but you know. Right, just open out into that. Just enough, don't crack it. That's it. As soon as we get some of this off, the weight will come down and it will be good anyway. Right, okay. I'll probably start off with the spindle gouge just to get rid of some of it. Like I say, the spindle gouge will always be quicker. So start up, step back. Mate, if it's gonna fly off, it can hit the wall. Right, okay. Get rid of this middle bit. I work from the center out. Trouble with that, it's wet and I can't uh, I can't sand or anything. So, but we'll get the cuts on that. Don't worry. We we'll go to a we might have to go to a smaller gouge. We we'll use a carbide, whatever. We'll probably use a carbide and clean that up. We have the technology. <laughs> we have modern technology. We have carbide. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's. Um, We've probably got to go over to carbide now, actually. Right, 
sorry, just having a drop of coffee, guys. Mouth's a bit dry. Right, okay. So I'm going to say I've done enough with the spindle gouge. Oh, look at that, look. That's the thing with the wet wood, look. See how it's... It goes like... Now, that's where you have trouble picking up your bevel because it sticks to it like a bit of plaster. Mm. And then, not like a plaster, like a cut plaster, a plaster like the wall plaster. <laughs> so, I always keep this little brass um, wire brush close by and I can... It don't take... Well, it can take the edge off of a traditional, it won't take nothing off of a, a carbide though. So, right, okay, I'm going up to 9mm. I'm going to bring my tool rest in at an angle, like so, always like this angle. Now, I've got to remember, I'm probably near enough to the depth on the bottom because I've hollowed down that way, okay? at the moment. I will do, but at the moment I want to just get the wings down. Control with the carbide. If you go in for a scrape, you've got to smash it up to pieces and you've got to tear that out real bad. <laughs> so I'm just coming back, bevels on, rotate it. Done clearing that tear out away. Okay. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. See that? The spindle gouge was leaving it there. The the, the nine mil carbide has got rid of that tear out. Now I've got to go a little bit more though, because I need a little bit deeper there. A little bit more off of there, but not not off the middle at the moment. We're saving that. be on the bevel. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're doing all right. We're doing all right. done there now we're going to come in because we want to get we want to clean cut and we want to come across that middle that bottom so now the tool for that the SCH6 so come on with the bevel no cutting to cut the cut from there
in and done another cut here but I'm not over worried about that and like I said I'm not sanding to um, real finish because this is going to have to dry a little bit it's wet wood you can see where the wet is in there um, but that can always go back on once it's uh, done for a little um, you know finished cup not finished cut a little sand be sanded once it's dried up and that'll be alright then Right, so, okay, feels nice, wrong key, and what I will do um, is I just go and I just put that on my sander and do the straight edges, I just hold it on there and it does it, but again, it needs to be a bit drier than what, what that is, so, there we go, that's not too bad, that's another one, right. Mm -hmm. There's that the first one. That's slightly smaller than that one, and this one can have a a little silver. Well, so there we go. A little end like that one. That bit of wood was slightly bigger than this piece. So there you go. There we go, guys. I'm not putting no finish on it. As I said, we've got we're beautiful in here. Look, we got rid of all that tear out. That's beautiful in there. Okay, needs a little bit of hand sand in there. A little bit. Got a little bit on that corner there, but we like I said. We need to let this wood dry first because all we're doing is going to lift lift the grain if we keep trying. So there we go. Now I like them sort of that way. Let's, see, let's get a, let's put that on. The, I should put a can down again. Uh, yeah. You never remember, do you, baby? No. No. Right, put that over there. That For there. Oops. Put that up there where it lives. Right. Okay, guys. Uh, there is table. There we go. Now I tend to like them that way, so they're more for the oriental type way. But there we go. That's it, guys. Okay. And like I said, really at the moment, tell you what, you can't make enough of these tea light holders. They just go. They go. They sell like crazy. Sell better than bowls or anything like that. Yeah. You know, tea light holders. You put them out there. They're just sold. They just sell completely gone so there you go the tea light holders so thanks for joining me guys and i will see you on the next one so toodle fit bye guys